Hello everyone, today we are going to be examining a hotly debated topic in FPV drones, which is battery cell count, and more specifically 4S versus 6S for your average 5 inch drone. So there are a lot of myths and claims surrounding this topic, so instead of me just going out and flying 4S and 6S back to back and giving my impressions, which frankly is quite vague and imprecise, I am going to be using numbers and data from Mini Quad Test Bench to set the record straight on the differences between 4S and 6S. So, if you haven't heard of Mini Quad Test Bench, it is an excellent resource. It has all kinds of data for all kinds of motors on different cell counts, on different props. So, we're going to be using that as our main resource to determine the actual differences between 4S and 6S. And it's worth mentioning that I did a very similar comparison with real data from Mini Quad Test Bench to compare low KV and high KV. So if you're interested in that video, please make sure to go check that out. So without further ado, let's take a look at the differences between 4S and 6S. Okay, so this is Mini Quad Test Bench. I really recommend you go check out this website if you haven't already. There is a lot of great information in the articles and you can take a look at data from motors and really learn a lot from this website. So first we're going to take a look at efficiency. And what I have done here is I've used the data from Mini Quad Test Bench for three sets of motors. So within each set, there are two motors, which are exactly the same model of motor, and they are swinging the same exact prop. The only difference is that one is on 4S and one is on 6S, and the KVs are different. And you may be saying, well, then it's not a fair comparison because the KVs are different. However, in my video I made about low KV versus high KV, we found that KV has no influence on efficiency or torque, so that doesn't really matter. And the other thing is, uh, there is only data available for 4S on high KV and 6S on low KV, so I'm also limited in that sense. So basically what we're doing here is we're holding everything constant except for cell count. So what I've done is I've taken the voltage and amperage data from Mini Quad Test Bench at 250 gram thrust increments. And from there I've calculated the power draw and then the efficiency. And we're measuring efficiency here in grams per watt. So basically how much thrust can you make per unit of power? So a higher grams per watt indicates a more efficient motor. So what I have graphed here is the T-Motor F60 Pro 2 in the high KV 4S in blue and low KV 6S in orange. And for this entire video, 6S will be in orange and 4S will be in blue. So taking a look at this graph, the 6S motor at a lower thrust level is slightly more efficient. In the mid range, it becomes slightly less efficient and then it becomes ever so slightly more efficient in the higher thrust ranges. So from this graph, it's kind of all over the place. There's not one cell count that is more or less efficient 100% of the time. So we can't really conclude much from this graph. Let's take a look at another set of motors. So this is the Emacs RS2. Once again, the 6S low KV is in orange, 4S high KV is in blue. So this time 6S is slightly less efficient in the lower thrust levels and it becomes slightly more efficient all the way through the higher thrust levels. But as you can see, the lines still are pretty much on top of each other. So we're kind of seeing a trend here, but let's take a look at the last set of motors. So this last set is the Brother Hobby R3, 6S in orange, 4S in blue. 6S starts off less efficient, then it becomes slightly more efficient and it becomes slightly less efficient. But once again, the lines are pretty much right on top of each other. And this is a trend that we were seeing for all three of these graphs. The lines are basically just on top of each other. One line is not consistently above the other. So this is really just showing us that there is no significant efficiency difference between 6S and 4S. Okay, so next up, we're going to be taking a look at torque. So I am in the Mini Quad Test Bench Data Explorer page, and I have the same three sets of motors pulled up. So once again, we're starting off with the T-Motor F60 Pro 2, 6S in orange, and 4S in blue. Now, 
The graph I have here is a time versus RPM graph. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, RPM isn't torque. So RPM is an angular velocity. And the derivative or slope of angular velocity is angular acceleration. And angular acceleration is proportional to torque. So basically, if one line has a greater or steeper slope than the other, that means that corresponding motor has more torque at that RPM. And if the lines are just parallel, that means that the torque is the same. So starting off with the T-Motor F60 Pro 2. So the first thing I want to point out is the 6S motor actually has a higher peak RPM, even though the equivalent KVs are pretty much the same. So this means that you're going to get more peak power on 6S because these motors are spinning the same exact prop. But what we're really looking at here is torque. So I'm going to zoom in on the part of the graph where we are ramping up as fast as we can from idle to 100% throttle. So as you can see, the lines are pretty much parallel up until the higher RPMs. So up until the higher RPMs, the torque is pretty much the same. But then the 4S motor starts tapering off sooner than the 6S motor. However, based on the fact that the 6S motor has a higher peak RPM at full throttle, this is kind of to be expected. Um, and this is what you see in different KVs. The lower KV motor is just going to start tapering off sooner because it's just not going to keep accelerating to that higher RPM uh, because its peak RPM is lower. So really not much of a torque difference before we are getting into the area where peak RPM starts to become a big factor in how much torque the motor is making. So let's take a look at the Emacs RS2. And you see this straight line here. This is just because of the way the data was collected. Ignore it, it's not relevant. So once again, I wanna point out that the peak RPM of 6S is once again significantly higher than that of the 4S motor, despite pretty close equivalent KVs. So something to keep in mind there, but once again, we're gonna zoom in and take a look at the slope of these lines. So once again, the lines are pretty parallel until we get to the higher RPMs, at which point the 4S motor starts tapering off sooner than the 6S motor. But this is to be expected because once again, the 6S motor has a higher peak RPM than the 4S motor. Lastly, the Brother Hobby R3. So once again, the 6S motor has a higher peak RPM than the 4S motor, despite the very close equivalent KVs. And we'll zoom in for the torque once again. Once again, the lines are very parallel, except at the higher RPMs, at which point the 4S motor starts tapering off a little bit sooner than the 6S motor. But other than that, once again, the slopes are pretty much the same at a given RPM. So what these three graphs are telling us is that the torques between 4S and 6S are basically the same. However, what we are also seeing is that the peak RPM and therefore peak thrust of 6S is significantly higher than the peak RPM and thrust of 4S, despite their equivalent KVs being extremely close. So what we can conclude from all of this data is very similar to what we concluded about low KV versus high KV. And that is that for 4S versus 6S, there is no significant efficiency difference and there is no significant torque difference. The only big difference is the peak RPM and therefore the peak thrust. And that is where 6S has the advantage. Okay, so to summarize the results, we did not find any significant differences in efficiency or torque between 4S and 6S. The only thing that we noticed was that for 6S, we saw a consistently higher peak RPM and therefore peak thrust number compared to 4S, despite the equivalent KVs being very close in value. So based on the data, based on these results, the only reason I see to run 6S is if you want that higher thrust at full throttle. Otherwise, it doesn't really seem to matter which cell count you run. So I know these results may have been surprising for some of you. In my next video, I'm going to be giving some of my theories as to why the results are the way they are, and also to 
explain why some people are experiencing things like a minute or so longer flight times on 6S batteries. So make sure that you get subscribed so that you do not miss that next video. Let me know down in the comments of what you thought of these results and if they were surprising to you, please like this video if you liked it and thanks for watching.